Hello students, this is Plants and Animals of Southern California and today I just want to introduce a little bit of terminology that we can use later on for other purposes. So this terminology has to do with the field of taxonomy. Taxonomy is the study of the formal classification of organisms and those um, groups that are formally recognized are called taxa and taxon is the singular Tax uh, is the plural. So, for instance, we have species, and they are taxa, and then those species may be grouped together into genera, and they are taxa, and genera can be grouped together into families, and then one or more families is can be grouped together into an order, and one or more orders grouped together is a class. So we get classes. And uh, classes grouped together uh, into phyla and phyla grouped together into kingdoms. There's also other uh, ranks or levels in this scheme. For instance, you could have subfamilies which would go here. Uh, you could have subgenera that would go here, and you could have subspecies that would go here. Um, <clears throat> and and people put lots and lots of order levels in if if they really need them. Uh, now another little thing that I want you to know about is that species are always named by two names. So for instance, humans are Homo sapiens. And we always underline or italicize Homo sapiens. The first name is the genus name. And the whole name together, or binomial, is the species name. We never refer to just sapiens. You could refer to H period sapiens if you had already established that we were talking about Homo. Okay, so this uh, scheme was set up 300 years ago and every organism has been shoved into this scheme where uh, species can only be in one genus, they can't be in multiple genera, and genera can only be in one family, they can't be in multiple families, and so on. And this was all done long before anybody was able to figure out anything about the tree of life. But now, let's go on. Um, the tree of life, or phylogeny, uh, we now are able to know more about, and so a phylogeny is represented like this, where there's a tree, and there's different things, and so on. Um, and up at the top here, you can have different species, let's say. Um, and Maybe just to be contrary, I'll make this one into a hexagon. Now, um, you could group or find taxa within this tree of life. For instance, um, this here you might recognize as a genus, and that would be a monophyletic genus because it would contain all the descendants of a common ancestor. Here's a common ancestor, and all of its descendants are included. So that's a monophyletic uh, group. There's some other monophyletic groups in here, too. So, for instance, here's another uh, monophyletic group. And then here's another monophyletic group. It could be a monophyletic group of just one thing. Now, if we have a phylogeny that's, say, like this, and we wanted to group together a bunch of things that were sort of like squares, but exclude things that were like hexagons, 
then that would be a group like that, and that would not be monophyletic. That would be paraphyletic. And I guess there's some level of consensus now that we want to get rid of paraphyletic groups. Um, so, for instance, uh, this grouping here looks a little bit like the grouping that we might find for um, for us and the, and things like gorillas and orangutans and so on. So, let's see here. Um, so these are humans and bonobos and common chimp and then uh, outward of that you have gorilla and outward of that where you have orangutan so uh, <coughs> once upon a time People used to make a grouping that included um, the chimpanzees, bonobos, gorilla, and orangutan. Uh, but that would be a paraphyletic group because it would be excluding humans. So that group is that used to be a family um, is no longer really recognized by most people. Now the species level might be a little bit different. So go here and consider the coastline. Here's San Francisco and then here's Los Angeles and it goes down. Baja is like there and here's the rest of Mexico. Of course we have some islands out there. Now um, what if we found there's a, a widespread common species here. Maybe it goes over into the Sierra Nevada a little bit too and it's found on Mount San Jacinto, Palomar, and then out here we find uh, on the island we find a pentagon species. Now what if those things were related to one another in the following way where you have a phylogeny and Pentagon species is there, and all the rest of these guys are squares. Then recognizing the squares as being one species and the Pentagon as being another species that would be recognizing a paraphyletic group and this situation is called a progenitor derivative species pair and uh, this one here is paraphyletic which would generally violate our rule of making all formal taxa uh, be monophyletic. Okay, well, um, that's really all that I have to say that, that and we'll use this terminology in the future.